Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is HD StarCraft, and of course, uh, I am going to be broadcasting for you guys the Red Bull Battlegrounds from New York City. Uh, and this is going to be another game from the group stage. I'll be doing some of the highlight matches from the entire tournament. And in the bottom left-hand corner of the map, we've got the Blue Zerg player. His name is Liquid Snoot. And uh, he's got the pretty awesome Team Liquid logo right there as well. I really like how this tournament formatted in the uh, very, I think, very cool um, logos. Because, uh, you know, that adds a little bit more identity to the player. Or, I guess it doesn't add identity, it would subtract identity. But it does make it more interesting to watch. Because you know, you know what, t what team these players are playing for. What organization they strive to achieve greatness uh, for. And so, in the top right-hand corner, we've got SKMC from Team SK Gaming, and there is their handy logo right there as well. He is the red Protoss player in the top right-hand corner of the map, and uh, I guess wherever, th this map is called Yongsu, so I guess the planet is called Yongsu. Wherever this takes place must be near the northern hemisphere, because as you can see on the map, it, it, you know, it's a snow map and then a grass map. So very, very interesting. Let's give you guys a quick uh, overview of how this map plays out. You do have the natural expansion. Blocked, of course, with the very standard now unbuildable plates. I think I've, I have talked about this map before. You've got the ledge right here, which cannot be accessed because there are trees there. And then a very interesting layout out to the open uh, areas of the middle of the map, of course. More team logos, sponsorships, whatever. I guess in the future of uh, esports gaming, we'll probably have Pepsi logos and, uh, you know, there'll be actual billboards. Like, literally, there will be a billboard place, like, right here or something that says, uh... Uh, Turtle Beach or something like that. <laughs> so, who knows? You know, the future of esports is um, very bright. A lot of interesting games on the horizon. Of course, we have uh, Heroes of the Storm. Uh, we've got, <clears throat> obviously, Dota 2 just went live with their ladder ranking not too long ago. And uh, I think that was yesterday, actually. And, of course, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One for all you console gamers, which has... You know, it's really cool now. Um, I, I don't have a PlayStation 4 or an Xbox One. I was thinking about getting one, but I thought it was really cool when I was researching it how... Uh, I really thought it was cool how they came with the, um, the share button on the controllers. You can actually share your content. I think, I think this is for the PlayStation. Uh, onto Twitch TV or Ustream. And guess where that all started? You know, gaming... Uh, you know, blew up on, for streaming at least, with StarCraft 2. And, uh, yeah, so that's very, very interesting to me. Uh, anyways, this is Red Bull Battlegrounds group stage. Um, we'll see what happens here. Both these players are obviously very good. Snoot is a Norwegian Zerg player. SKMC is, of course, the Korean All-Star. And, uh, we'll see what happens here. Zerg versus Protoss. I, I cast it as Zerg versus Terran, so hopefully the next match I do will be TVP just to round about as I shake off all the rustiness from casting. And look at these Zerglings here, man. They are going to get inside and do a little bit of damage, at least. It looks like they uh, tried to kill off a drone, unfortunately uh, unfortunately for MC. I don't think any workers went down, no. So, Snoot here gets in. He does get a scout and is going to be forced to pull those Zerglings away. One interesting to thing to note um, in this set, because I will be casting the entire set, is Snoot has an interesting strategy for Zerg versus Protoss. Um, he actually really likes going for Baneling Busts um, on maps with gold expansions. He'll actually, instead of bothering with taking the expo at the natural, which is blocked by pylons most of the time, uh, he'll just expand to the gold and Baneling Bust a, a Protoss player who forged fast expands. So that's interesting to note. Maybe we'll see that on a gold map in the next map. We do have a counter attack here coming from MC. And he is going to try to take out the third expansion of Snoot. Which is protected by a queen and a few zerglings. I don't think... Oh, but a stalker comes in. And that is going to provide, um, provide a little bit more firepower with the mothership core as well. More zerglings coming in here. And will Snoop be able to defend? He is going to need to save this expansion. If he loses it, it's a big loss for a zerg player. And it looks like he doesn't have enough forces to make a defense. And right now, this expansion is taking heaps of damage. Will there be anything that Snoop can do to protect the third expo? Should it go down, he is going to be in a lot of trouble. More Zerglings coming in right now. Zerglings speed is on the way. Hatchery is now at half health. 
There, even if all these units go down, however, there's no way for Snoot to destroy the Mothership Core, so if this expansion takes too much damage, the Core theoretically can take it down, but there is a Mothership, uh, there is a Queen coming, meanwhile, the Zealots and Stalkers trying to avoid the Zerglings, and they do just that, and it looks like this hatchery is going to stay alive just barely as more Zerglings come through. It's going to be very close, guys, but uh, I think that Snoot will have enough to defend here, and that is going to force the Mothership Core to warp everything back home. Oh, wow. Great defense by Snoot. And uh, looking at the units lost here, I guess it tells a different tale, because if you look at this, you instantly think, oh, Snoot is the one who kind of lost the, is losing this game right now. But, you know, there's, it's an intangible importance. You can't really place a value on, you know, losing or, or, and keeping the hatchery alive. And I think keeping the hatchery alive makes up for any units lost that, that Snoot might have incurred here. Because really, you also have to think that MC is a little bit set back here as well by, uh, by going for that attack. Yeah, he brought some of his units back with the Mothership Recall. But um, I, I think Snoot is in an okay position here. And uh, he is teching up to Leia right now. Ooh. I feel like that is a little bit late. Might be because he was forced to defend so heavily that his layer tech is coming a little later than usual. But uh, And here comes MC again. Now, you guys will recall that MC is known for his aggressive play style, um, uh, most certainly in Protoss versus Zerg. And, and he's certainly going to uh, play to his you know signature strength here and going to go for an attack. But it looks like some of his reinforcements are going to be caught in the middle of the map. And uh, that's not good for uh, MC. He needs to make sure his units don't get picked off here. One sentry, two sentry, and a zealot do go down, it looks like. Spore Crawler is now coming up um, for Snoot, who's going to try to rush some defenses up at his expansion. There is a pylon coming up as well. And that is not good. That pylon is out of range of Snoot's vision. He doesn't even realize that more reinforcements can come in here very quickly. Now he does. He brings all of his Zerglings up. And he gets the surround. But Force Fields are coming out and really blocking the passageways here. And preventing the Zerglings from getting a good surround. One pylon will get taken out. But there is still a pylon here reinforcing this Protoss uh, position. Eight Roaches are on the way here for Snoot. Will he be able to get his Roaches in position on time? This hatchery still is in uh, you know, the danger zone. Um, very close to dying, but it looks like these roaches might be able to come out just in time to provide the defense necessary for Snoot to make a hold here at this expansion. And, you know, you guys all realize without me telling you, you know, if that hatchery goes down, it, it is pretty much GG. I've rarely seen, you know, a Zerg player come back from losing an expansion. Um, it does happen, you know, not saying it doesn't, but it's, it's rare. Uh, and, uh, you know, every player knows that. That's why, that's why you know, MC is focused so heavily on taking this expansion down. Um, the interesting thing, though, about this game is because both players are so heavily focused on their army right now, their technology has kind of suffered, as has their macro, um, as a result. And you can see here, you know, 11 minutes in, Twilight Council coming up. It's a little bit later than you would expect. Um, we do have plus two weapons coming out here for MC as well. Wow. So he is really... Uh, you know, playing a super aggressive style here. You know, he's going for Twilight Council, going for all these aggressive upgrades, and he's got a Warp Prism too with Zealots. And now what will Snoot do? It looks like he is going to go for Hydras. I, I, I like the decision. Honestly, Roach Hydra is, you know, probably the best way for Snoot to, to counter this heavy ground aggro coming from MC rather than going for, I think a lot of Zergs might go for Mutalisks instead. I, I think Roach Hydra is the way to go. Um, Swarmos are also pretty good as well, and we'll see what happens here. Looks like some Zealots are going to come through. Drones are going to quickly uh, get out of the way, and these Roaches, along with the Spore and Queen, should provide enough of defense, uh, enough of a defense to force this Warp Prism back home. So a nice job by Snoot. And uh, in the meantime, this expansion has slowly been regenerating some HP. Um, Snoot maybe may have dropped a transfuser or two on there as well. Doesn't want to just let that hatchery stay in the red because it, can, you know, Protoss can snipe out expansions real quickly uh, with the warp prism that's in play right now. And uh, we do have a robotics bay on the way as well, so we're gonna have Colossus and. I like it from MC because he, what he did is he brought the War Prism in, he saw the Hydra Den, and immediately uh, upon scouting that, he said, okay, I'm going to defeat this, I'm going to need to get uh, Colossus. And uh, so he's very intelligent here. Uh, these two queens actually being pushed away by that Zealot. 
Uh, I'm actually surprised that, uh, yeah, there we go. Bring some reinforcements and control your Zelnaga Tower, um, as the northern polar one has already been taken by the other Zealots. So you've got to make sure that you at least have the southern one protecting your own base. Um, and in the meantime here, one Overseer floating around, checking for what's going on. The Twilight Council is about to finish Blink. So we are going to have, basically, you know, uh, you know, the Stalker Sentry of Mortal Ball combined with Colossus. And that is going to be versing Roaches and Hydras and a pretty quick tech up to, for Snoot to Hive here. I, I say relatively quick because um, it's not, you know, a 14 minute Hive isn't, you know, blazingly fast. But considering how long it took the layer to get up, I think it's a pretty quick Hive. And he is also going to be getting Swarm Host here as well. Now, um, I think Swarm Hosts are excellent in, in, in this matchup um, if you can, you know, you know, overwhelm the Protoss army with all those Locusts. Um, as long as they don't have too many Colossus, you know, Protoss have a difficult time dealing with those Swarm Hosts. So, I think a great decision to go for Swarm Hosts here. He's really packing it in. Eight Swarm Hosts are on the way. There is a Warp Prism. Gonna try to sneak into the main base here, as are some Roaches going to take over the Northern Zone on the tower. But Blinking Stalkers immediately uh, shut that down. And this Warp Prism is looking for an opening, a weakness to exploit. But uh, as it flies over Zerg airspace, you know, the, the creep tumors, the roaches, um, they are going to reveal the trajectory of that war prism and make it very difficult indeed for Snoot to be able to combat. Um, but MC here is going to enforce his position as the tumors continue to spread out their growth. And he is going to look to attack, but there are so many Zerg units here. Uh, look at the roaches, the hydras, and the locusts. How do you stop that? Now, they don't really have that many upgrades. You can see that actually they don't have any upgrades at all. They're at 0-0. Zero, zero. Whereas the Protoss army is researching plus three weapons. There's a huge upgrade discrepancy here. Uh, and I'm not sure, I'm not sure why. Uh, you'd think Snoot, there you go, Evolution Chamber on the way right now. But his upgrades are... Um, actually, no, he does have plus one, so I do apologize. I didn't see that. I must have just completed. So he just finished plus one. I was going to say he is going to be really far behind the upgrades. But both armies are maxed out here, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I guess we're going to see an epic battle now. One thing that uh, I think Snoot needs to think about going for is Corruptors to deal with these Colossus. MC's expansion is under attack, though. A couple of Roaches able to sneak behind the, uh, uh, behind the backside of this expo and are going to start taking out some probes minimal losses here though i think for mc and uh he's not going to be too concerned about that meantime whoa i think those are just locusts that exploded and you can see they are actually really look at how long range they are they're literally from the bottom of the map they can make it all the way to the Selnaga tower before they die with um evolve enduring locusts evolve enduring locusts basically is a range upgrade for swarm hosts um, as it as it also is a um, endurance upgrade because you know it allows the locust to stay out that much longer so it's a nice nice upgrade um, we do have a viper on the way here and hydra viper is incredible against colossus if uh snoot can get them on the field in time and it looks like mc is pushing out he's got a massive protoss army here taking the fourth expansion at the same time as snoot is taking the fifth but this fifth expo is going to fall under siege to that warp prism which is coming in with zealots in the meantime locusts are going to stream their way over to this protoss army but force fields keeping them at bay and what mc is doing here is basically blockading the access point for the zerg to defend this expansion and, and snoot is going to lose that expo nothing that he can do about that mc is out of uh mc uh, excuse me yeah snoot is out of position mc is in position and the hatchery is going to go down great play by MC. He knows that if he takes control of this high ground ledge, it will be pretty difficult for the Zerg to defend this expo. Actually, there was a path that he could have taken here, but it looks like Snoot just decided against it. And look at how many Swarmos he's got. Holy cow. I mean, I'm going to pull up the units tab right now. 33 Swarmos. Uh, and it seems like most of his Roaches and Hydras are pretty much completely gone. So he's just going to go for a max Swarm Host army. And we'll see if this is going to be able to stop MC, who right now I feel like has the advantage. Uh, he's got the fourth base down. He's about to take another hatchery out. He's encroaching on Team Liquid's area. And now what the hell is Snoop going to do? Now, uh, this is actually not the best place for the Protoss army to be because, you know, look at that. The Vipers can use the high ground and abduct these forces up there. And of course, the Zerg has high ground all throughout. 
Um, and I think MC might want to get out of this position right now. This is not a great place for him to be. Thankfully for him, he's not dealing with any investors that have fungal growth. That would really add some pain. More warp gates are on the way right now for MC. He's also finishing Dark Shrine, so he's going to have quite the uh, the threat on the field pretty soon with DTs. In the meantime, though, he's continuing to press forward, and Snoot doesn't have a response, but, you know, that's the thing about Swarmos. It's not a response per se. It's just a war of attrition. The closer in you press with that Protoss army, you know, the more risk you're forced to take. There's going to be an infinite amount of locusts that will be coming at you. And uh, I think MC realizing now that uh, it might be the best choice to just retreat. Um, and, you know, he did kill off an expansion, so there's no reason, I don't think, to press forward anymore. And I, I honestly feel like he might have bitten off more than he should have. Uh, you know, got a little bit greedy with the pie there. Um, he should have just taken the expansion and pulled away. Be but now, you know, the units lost have kind of evened out 7,000 per side. And Snoot really never lost a single swarm host in that engagement. So uh, I like what Snoot did there. Just kind of sat back behind the trenches. You know, World War One style trench warfare. You keep coming. My units are basically burrowed underground. And I've got lines of them. Literally lines of them with infinite amount of soldiers. And here we go. Um, storm coming out, which is a good way to deter the locust, but it only lasts so long. You know, you can only have so much psionic storm. Fungal, uh, not fungal, but a uh, blinding cloud coming down there, blocking the stalkers from attacking. And I think that Snoot is going to be okay here. Um, he is just continuing to pull back and play that trench warfare. And those locusts are going to continue to come in, but time warp field being used to snare the locusts and allow MC enough time to take out this expansion. And he does just that. Patchery falls down once again, and I, I can see MC's strategy here. Basically, what he's doing is trying to t take out the, the uh, fifth expansion of the Zerg player repeatedly and basically deny Snoot the fifth expansion. I think I like MC's strategy here. He's actually going to go for another expansion. He's got to be careful not to go for too much, though. That was uh, what cost him in the last battle, but he's got the high ground. And he's got so many Colossus. I think he will be able to take out another hatchery here. And, and Snoot is in a lot of trouble. Will he be able to save it? All these locusts just now coming out. It looks like it might just be enough for Snoot to hang on. And he's bringing all of his score crawlers down to reinforce his position. But, I mean, MC's got the high ground right now. He's got the high, high ground. And uh, this is a serious situation here for, for Snoot. If he continues to lose units, he's going to bleed it all off. And, and the major problem now is he doesn't have a fifth expansion mining. Uh, actually, he does. He just replenished this one right here. But MC's strategy is like playing an embargo game. He's just denying the fifth hatchery from coming up and preventing the Zerg from making the money he needs to make to stay in this game. A lot of blinding clouds coming down here, I think. No, that was just the green grass block. It looked like blinding clouds. Would have been nice, but these Protoss units continue to attack. And Snoot is in a lot of trouble here. There's no way to go about it. Um, no other two ways to say it. A lot of Zealot death noises here. I hear a lot of Zealots dying. But the main core of the Protoss army remains alive, and more reinforcements are streaming in. Look at how many gateways there are back at home powering this Protoss offensive. Vipers trying to extract energy from the extractors. But another hatchery falls down, and MC, I think, is going to take game one of this set. Barring a miracle here from Snoot. Vipers continuing to abduct, but this Protoss army is just too damn strong. And the Zerg is going to fall, so Snoot calls GG. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this game. Game two is going to be coming out right after this, so stay tuned. And uh, this is HD, signing out.